This channel is supported by Truefire. Truefire is an online library of lessons from some of my favorite players. There's thousands of lessons on there. You can use the promo code JNC40 to get 40% off of any of their courses. <laughs> I'm cheap, I think that's the reason why. I prefer PRS SEs to the, the real thing. I think that's part of it, at least. Now, as folks who may have seen one or seven of my videos with the PRS SE DGT, I bought this um, purely on the idea that I thought that maybe people were kind of overblowing the hype on these things. As it turns out, I completely agree with them. This is really quite a special guitar. Um, and because I really enjoyed that, I thought, well, let's have a look and see what the 594 is all about, which is one of the other models that came out of Indonesia, um, much like this one, similar sort of timing. The thing is that I definitely wouldn't be able to afford to try both a real, you know, the core model DGT, as well as the core model 594. What are those, like 4,000 sort of pounds for, for each of those? Um, but I can try sort of these thousand pound ones. Uh, I think they're more within the grasp of the ordinary non-dentist. What I also think about this is, I don't think it should be surprising that a 4,000 pound guitar would be really good. In fact, I think it should be a given. I think it should be considered relatively easy to make a really good guitar for that kind of money. Do you know what I mean? Like, 
you know, most people like two, three months wages to be able to put together a guitar. I think it should be the case that a, a PRS core model should be, and we should expect them to be very, very consistent. Similarly, with the Gibson Les Paul kind of standard or higher up, I think the money that you spend on them, you are within your rights, I think, to expect that those guitars should be consistent, should be very good, should, should sound great, and should probably be ready to gig straight out of the box. What I think is less easy to do is build a really, really good guitar for around the thousand pound mark or less. And I think that is what PRS, when they are getting it right, are doing in this Indonesian part of the world. Um, they also have the S2 models, which now are creeping up in value. And to me, it seems like they've sort of lost a little bit of what that was about. It seems like this is basically like a PRS S2 type guitar just made in Indonesia. They've got really pretty decent specs on them. I guess the S2 difference might be that you have less kind of sections of wood. Um, the the other model 594 that I sent back because of the dodgy fret, it seemed like the, the back body was made out of quite a few pieces of mahogany and the top I think was three pieces of maple and even the neck was made out of a at least two pieces of wood um but in any case whether that matters or not what you end up with and what i've been finding with these is that they're consistently a very good weight so this is a 594 this one weighs something like seven pound and four um as well as having some fairly interesting specs this has you know like a a, a nice chunky neck and it's not always that easy to find guitars that have these kind of specs on them uh the fretwork feels really good as well and i don't feel like i'm missing out on the full prs experience when i'm playing it it's i've had one prs dgt i've played a few others um and i think what you generally get with a prs is like reliability consistency and but like this dgt and the 594 do sound very similar um whether that's deliberate or not, I'm not sure. Um, but anyway, so, however, totally kind of pro level, I'd say, gigging instruments. And yeah, like I say, I think that's more impressive to me than putting out an, a guitar for, you know, the deposit on a house that is good. I don't know, am I the only one who thinks that? I could be, but yeah, that's that's for me why I prefer these PRS SEs, particularly these more recent ones that kind of look like the full PRS experience, more or less. They are veneer tops, but they generally do look really good. Um, the workmanship on these has been pretty consistent. Uh, of the three that I've tried, there was one dodgy fret that I sent back on the other 594, but these are pretty immaculate, play really well, and yeah they don't to me feel like they're a, a huge step away from you know the big boy prs's and i think that is quite a testament to the quality of these things thinking about this topic a bit uh joe bonamassa springs to mind as a guy that you know has worked with epiphone on a few of these kind of not cheap but not expensive kind of signature models that are trying to recreate something that is cool about you know one of his guitars like the lazarus and I really enjoy that guitar. That is maybe also kind of the catalyst that made me kind of reconsider some of this stuff, like whether they're made in China, Indonesia, Japan, or America or Mexico. Really what matters is their processes and also, you know, how good their QC is and all that stuff. Talking of Joe Bonamassa, True Fire is a place where you can watch some Joe Bonamassa content. He's got a course on there kind of going through rhythm and lead parts of, of songs and stuff that he's put together with full tabs and all that sort of stuff, as well as going through some of his really cool pieces of gear. Um, at the moment, uh, I'm running, Truefire gave me the code JNC100. If you were considering the All Access Pass, you can use that to get $100 off of it, so you can get like a really good price um, for all of their courses for a year's access. Uh, I've found loads of stuff on there that I've really enjoyed. Alan Hines, Tim Miller, Joe Bonamassa, Andy Timmons has a bunch of courses. Andy Wood has a bunch of courses. Uh, Tim Lurch for your jazz stuff. He was on that pedal show yesterday. Uh, who else have we got? We've got Tommy Emmanuel for your acoustic stuff. Mike Dawes for your acoustic stuff. 
there's just loads of awesome stuff on there. So if you were to go for this all access pass with the JNC 100 code, you could probably find a bunch of stuff on there that would keep you inspired and keep your fingers moving. Give that a try. Fighting the perception that you've got an Indonesian made guitar that is really high quality uh, versus it being some sort of compromise. Uh, I do think they've they've really nailed it. So yeah, I, I think I'm a PRS SE guy and I would totally recommend these guitars to anyone who's looking to try them. If you get dodgy workmanship on them, send them back and try another one because I think they are churning out enough of these that you're bound to, by law of averages, stumble upon a good one. I've stumbled two out of the three have been really good, except for that dodgy fret. The other one was totally fine. They look great. I think they sound really good. And more importantly, they're really, really, really fun and good to play. Uh, I think of these two, the DGT stands out to me as slightly more unique, having these kind of taller frets. But um, give them a try, I guess. More on that to come, I guess. I've got to do a full comparison of these at some point, but I just wanted to kind of float that out there. You know, if I was going to be gigging a guitar, these might well be a great choice. I don't think I'd gig a £4,000 PRS. I think it's too much money to take out to dodgy pubs and weddings.